Hello, everyone. This is Nicole Whitlock with the Ecom Sellers Podcast. And I have with me today my co host, my partner in crime on this journey, Kelly the Ecom Mom Ward. <laughs> and Kelly and I are here. We come to you every single week to share with you e commerce news, tips, and more. And I do want to announce that we are actually going to make a change. What kind of timing was that? Um, we're going to make a slight change to the schedule starting October the 1st. So the Ecom Sellers podcast is going to broadcast earlier. Um, we want to let you know, please share it out. Let a friend know, put it on your calendar. We're going to broadcast at, I think either 5 PM or 6 PM. I'll know next week for sure, but we're going to be podcasting earlier than 8 30. So we've been doing this 8 30 Monday, uh, time for a while and we're moving it up to around five or six on Mondays starting October the 1st. So we hope that you will come plug in, hang out with us and, uh, check out the news and the tips that we want to share. So with that, Kelly, how are things going in your business and how are things going in your life? Um, well, it was kind of slow last week, but this weekend is better. Um, you know, I've been really, I kind of took a step back from going sourcing this week and really focused on listing, you know, cause you can buy all the stuff, but if it's, it's not listed, it's not going to sell. That's right. <laughs> people can't buy what they can't find so mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> or if they do buy it, they're gonna buy it from somebody else and not you mm -hmm. so yeah you be um, so i did that um and you know it's of course it's you know football started this week i'm a big football fan had my fantasy teams already you know football games are going on i got one fantasy team on one phone and, and the other fantasy watching on the other team on my other phone yeah I'm, I'm like that crazy fantasy football person but it's just fun and gives me something to do and i'm like i'll list stuff on one day so i can sit and just cross post all day sunday while the games are on and i'm not having to be trying to list and stuff i just cross post and then update my my um yeah, and my my inventories sheets and everything so you just make your own little schedule make it work and i can still watch my football <laughs> I know, that's right i did not know that you were such a fantasy football or just a football you know super fan so i am <laughs> now aware of this <laughs> I used to watch football a lot, but, you know, over the last several years, I just have been completely unplugged, not for any specific reason, because my kids have taken up so much of my time, so much of my energy, so much of my focus. And so I just don't have any available bandwidth for anything extra. So I don't get to watch a lot of TV. I don't get to watch a lot of football. I don't get to watch a lot of anything. And if I do, I play something in the background just mm -hmm. so I have some background noise. But in any case, we have uh, continued over here just trying to pull life together uh, with the boys and with school and with therapies and starting new programs and just it's been a lot. Um, you know, maybe one day I'll talk about all the stuff that I've been having to deal with. I will tell you, being a parent of a special needs child, two of them, is a lot as they get closer and closer to 18, the amount of things that you have to deal with and the things that you have to do go up exponentially, more than I could even prepare to process. <laughs> and so they have absorbed uh, probably about 70% of my time, which means that everything else was neglected for a while. But I spent a lot of time getting things caught up and putting new processes in place. You already know we had a transition from one of our uh, VAs. And so that took a lot of time. So it's just been a lot of long hours and just trying to restructure things. But I think I got my VA team ready for Q4. We're having our first kickoff meeting uh, tomorrow. So I'm excited about that and uh, getting ready for Q4. So hope all of you guys are getting ready for Q4. We are going to segue now into the news. So Kelly, the floor is yours while I pull up the news on my side. All right. I didn't find much news. Um, but some of the stuff they were talking about, this is going to happen. And it was like the next day. I'm like, well, that doesn't help us. You know. 
But yeah. let's see, Etsy, um, Etsy, the sellers are stating that they aren't seeing the support features that they were promised when eBay, when Etsy um, raised their fees earlier this year. Uh, they talk about they haven't seen the 24 7 chat support. Apparently, um, to be a, a, eligible for this 24 7 chat support, you have to have at least one sale within the last month and have no policy violations, which some are like, well, I'm trying to reach you on a policy violation. There's some, you know, someone's complaining like, you're saying this item um, was not handmade and I made it, so I know it's handmade. So, you know, and they're trying to get in contact with support to, you know. To dispute so, it. Yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. Um, also, Etsy, um, is, uh, with their Etsy, um, what they call it, Etsy Open or their version of like that of the eBay Open. Um they're, they state they're going to run new holiday commercials and are also going to redesign the um, Etsy seller's handbook. So that's like, that's like in the back office where they have like all the policies and such and where you can, they also have like some educational stuff for sellers. So that's what's on Etsy. Um Amazon. Amazon has a set out deadlines for stocking holiday items in FBA warehouses. So um, for Black Friday and Cyber Monday, they said it's November second. I mean, it's not going to be like if you, it gets there November third, you're not going to get. It's not. It's, they're just saying it's best practice to have it there by November second for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Um, and for Christmas, it's December 1st because you have so many people sending stuff in. Some sellers, that's the only time they really make their money is Christmas. And so they're sending bukus and bukus and bukus of stuff. And then you have everyone else sending all their extra holiday stuff from what they usually send. And so you have all these backups of trucks coming into the warehouses and not enough employees being able to sort everything out. And so it slows down the process of stuff getting from the trucks into the warehouse. So, and plus with all the, everything going on with the shipping and everything across the whole, you know, nation. Mm-hmm. Um, but they do say these recommendations are based on estimates and are subject to change. Yep. Um, and this is, you can find this under the key FBA holiday selling dates um, in the U.S. This is, these are the dates for the U.S. I don't know about international dates. So I'm trying to work with my phone here. Um <laughs> They're also offering a week of deals this week um, to small businesses starting September 12th through the 18th. So, you know, if you have a small business and you sell on Amazon, then you're able to see these deals this week. Um, eBay. eBay says there's no more media mail for magazines, which you really weren't supposed to be using media mail for magazines. Um, and so if you were... You need to change that as your setup because magazines you can't use this media email because they have advertising in it. So knowing what you're supposed to use when you're shipping can save you money because if you use media mail and then you end up and you end up sending something that's not media mail, then that can get to your customer and you can lose customers that way because you don't know how much shipping to use correctly. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing I have is um, the inflation fears for shoppers to get an early jump on holiday shopping. So a lot of people have already, I mean, I've bought a couple things already, mainly because I have the hook up about, I know when the clearance is at the Hobby Lobby, that's my, where my daughter works now. So, 
That's a hookup. That's a hookup, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but shoppers, there are a lot of people are starting to shop before Halloween or they're planning to start shopping in the middle of October instead of wait until right around Christmas because they're afraid, you know, if stuff jumps up higher before, you know, the prices go up higher, but, you know, before Christmas, they don't want to pay those higher prices. They want to, you know, wait for those. They want to get today's prices instead. Yeah. So that's what I saw. All right. Well, let me share my screen. We'll see how much I found. <laughs> I was busy all this week, so I didn't hunt for news like I normally hunt for news. So I'm sorry. <laughs> let me share my screen. And let me do this. Okay. So going back to what Kelly pulled up, which is the key FBA holiday dates in the U.S., um, this is, you can just Google search this. You, if you're not an Amazon seller, then you don't necessarily have to worry about that. But let's talk about some of the dates that might be wrapped around this. Um, so it says um, November the 2nd. So your goal or your objective would be, of course, to have your shipment ready and, and submitted, you know, before November the 2nd, if possible. So it's, it could still be in transit and on its way to the Amazon warehouse. If you can like package it up and have it shipped out, you know, the week before. So it arrives by November the 2nd, that's even better. Um, so from a processing standpoint, keep that in mind. The other thing is the same thing around December, again, the week before. So in December, typically there is a window where they do this whole guaranteed shipping. It's not an Amazon thing. It is all of the online retailers kind of collectively have a uniformed kind of, hey, we'll guarantee that it'll arrive by Christmas if you buy it by this date. And so typically it's somewhere around like December the 8th or December the 10th, or even sometimes up to like December the 12th. And so you want to make sure that your inventory is, if you're sending into Amazon's warehouse, you want to make sure it's in before, of course, December the 1st, if you can get that shipment ready. And ironically, December the 1st is like you're coming right off of the tail end of Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So that's cutting it super close. But, you know, typically Black Friday, Cyber Monday, when everybody else is sitting down having Thanksgiving dinner, watching the game, like sellers <laughs> are doing something else. <laughs> That's like the craziest week uh, because there's just a lot of sales coming in and you don't want to be backlogged. So as soon as you get a sale, you're like shipping, you know, you're prepping it for shipment anyway. So you want to be strategic about that. If you can start working on that shipment that you want to be arriving by December the 1st, like before Black Friday, Cyber Monday, that will help you so that that way you can focus your efforts on Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So just all those dates, when you look on a calendar, they're kind of tight. I'm just trying to give you a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of releasing the pressure if you're planning on sending in a lot of stuff. You also want to keep these dates in mind. Even if you're not uh, fulfilling with Amazon, I'm confident that if you are sending to Deliver or ShipBob or any of the other uh, fulfillment and prep centers out there, that they have some deadline dates too. Whether you're an Amazon seller, or a Walmart seller, an eBay seller, and you're using another fulfillment service, then they have some deadlines as well. So you want to be strategic, get your calendar out and plan appropriately and accordingly so that that way you meet their deadline requirements. They're probably going to be close to Amazon's. Um, so if you want to use Amazon as your starting point for the dates, then you know that's not a bad idea. And then last but not least, I know, I don't know if Kelly brought it up or not. And Kelly, if you did, um, you can remind me. But um, so Meltables... Being able oh, to send yeah. into Amazon is coming up. If you don't know, you need to write it down right now that selling a lot of sweets, a lot of candies, a lot of things that might melt, um, that is like a, you can make a lot of money during uh, Q4. Halloween, Christmas, Thanksgiving, even all the way up until uh, Valentine's Day, like the sweets are the thing. So your chocolates and your other things that melt, just keep all of that in mind. 
um, that that date is coming up for Amazon sellers. If you're not an Amazon seller, and again, you're using another fulfillment center, or you're maybe you're doing Walmart, WFS, like there's there, you probably want to inquire when they can, if that warehouse receives food, when they can start receiving it. If you're with a, um, you know, a service that doesn't allow you to send in food, then that's fine. But if you are with someone that allows you to send in food, know that Amazon's date is October the 15th. So you want to coordinate and plan accordingly so that your inventory can arrive on October the 15th and start, you know, being disseminated and, and uh, shipped out uh, to your customers because that's like two weeks before Halloween. It's two weeks before Halloween. So a lot of chocolate, a lot of meltables are going to be selling for Halloween. And if you're shipping it yourself, especially with the temperatures being really just sometimes unrelenting, uh, <laughs> keep in mind so that that way your stuff does not arrive at your to your customer as one big giant chocolate drop. Like it's just completely. Yeah, you don't want that. You want a satisfied customer. So do what you can and be smart about when you're going to put your listings up, when you want to guarantee that you'll be shipping it out, and then how you're going to ship it. If you're not paying attention to the weather, you probably want to put that on your agenda to start checking the weather, you know, every week for a couple of weeks. And, you know, there's going to be some candies that are hard candies that have a lower chance of melting, but your chocolates are definitely going to melt. Like there's nothing you can get around that. Some of your caramels, some of your, you know, others, white chocolate included, you want to be mindful of all that and just try to be on the other side of October the 15th, which means that will impact some of your sweet sales for Halloween. So start getting strategic now. Uh, don't let this like, you know, this date get here. And then you're like, oh, I don't have a game plan. I'm telling you now, this is your time to put together your game plan. Anything else you want to add to that, Kelly? Nope. Mm, nope. You covered it. Okay. You covered it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this article comes to us from gobankrates.com. And again, I always pull these up in advance. So who knows what pops up? So it says nine best items to uh, th uh, for the fall from the Dollar Tree. So to get. And I don't, you know, they've got a few different things. Uh, decorative autumn uh, signs, harvest theme uh, signs. Uh, pumpkin shaped reefs, uh, themed doormats, uh, cinnamon pillar like uh, candles, and a cinnamon apple. Uh, fall leaves and ceramic plates, fall leaves and ceramic mugs, uh, velvet pumpkins, velvet pumpkins, uh, fall kitchen towels. Now, why am I sharing this? All the time I bring up stuff when people say, I don't know what to sell. I don't know what to this. I don't know what to that. They literally just gave you a list. You like Google, just turn on the Google alerts when they, for certain stores. And then when they, you get a list that says nine best, 10 best, seven things you should buy, blah, 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 blah. That is your opportunity to start sourcing those particular items or having your VA start doing some research on those particular items. And you want to store this information in your calendar for next year. So that if I were going to sell these things next year, I would put it in my calendar for August the 1st so that that way, or July the 1st, so that way I'm ordering that inventory in advance because I already know it's going to sell like crazy in September. So this is me getting strategic and this is me suggesting that you get strategic about how you run your business and how you source inventory so you can stay profitable year round. Pay attention to these articles. They actually are helpful. The next article comes to us from The Street. I don't remember what this article is. So Kohl's is launching a new retail focus that competes with Target. So these two guys, <laughs> Kohl's has had a lot of information. So it's Bed Bath & Beyond. So you can just do some research. But you know, we already know that Kohl's sales have been declining. This comes to us from The Street. So this is Wall Street Journal's like blog or whatever and you can come and read it but basically they are working to do some restructuring to their stores and they are hoping to become more of a competitor directly with target so this could be a good thing for us 
That also means, again, if you haven't used those Coles bucks, I'm telling you now, this is like the third time I've said it. You better start using those Coles bucks before they're gone. <laughs> before they are gone. Okay, so the Dollar General's newest customers are people that are making 100000 a year. So what does that mean to you? That means that people are paying attention to where they're spending their dollars and what they're buying. Now, remember, your Dollar Generals of the world, your family dollars, their sizes and ounces of like, I'm going to use Dawn, uh, you know, dishwashing liquid as an example. And I don't know what the sizes are, so I'm just going to make up some numbers. So let's say you can go to the Dollar General and you can get some Dawn for like 20, 25 ounces. And at Walmart, they sell a 30 ounce. So again, 25 ounces, that price is going to be different than 30 ounces. When you are selling products, sometimes selling those products that have the sizes that are specific to those dollar store type uh, stores might actually be beneficial to you because your competition might be a little lower than those people that are always 100% sourcing from Walmart. So if everybody's sourcing from Walmart and they're all getting the Dawn dishwashing liquid, because again, it's a recession proof product. It is a replenishable. So if they're always buying the 30, you got like 5,000 sellers on Dawn and they're buying the 30 ounce and you're selling the 25, you are going to have less competition. So pay attention to those different sized, odd sized products and pay attention to what the Dollar General is selling. If you haven't been into the Dollar General, go go walk one, go to a couple of them. And Kelly always reminds us that they have the five dollars uh, friends and family. What is that Saturday? So Dollar, Dollar General. Yeah. Dollar yeah. General. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dollar General. They have got the twenty five dollar coupon. There you go. So take advantage of that. Go check out a Dollar General. If you haven't walked the store, go walk one. Go walk a family dollar. Go walk the store. See what they have. Pay attention to what they've got. Because typically those dollar type stores, some of their products, the sizes are going to be different than your big box Walmarts and Targets and stuff like that. All right. Not always, but sometimes. And then also like your Walgreens and your CVS. And then the next one comes to us from Costco. This is uh, the article comes to us from Mashed and Costco's tea that's turning heads. So I picked up this article because, you know, I don't know anything about this tea. I really don't care about it. Let's just be honest about it. But <laughs> I don't care about the tea. I do care about the article because what it does is that anytime they're showcasing a product, that is instant marketing, instant traffic. Like someone's going to be reading Mashed. A few people are going to, they have subscribers. So they're going to get this and some people are going to be trying to hunt down this tea. And so even if you're not selling the tea now, this could be one of those that, again, you put into your inventory sourcing sheet so that that way you are mindful of it for next year and or pay attention to the brand and see what other flavors they're putting out. Because this is free traffic. This is free advertising. This is, you know, instant customers are going to be looking for this because this article was written. So if you're that person that's struggling to try and find products that are moving or selling or that you can make a lot of money or charge just a little bit more for it, not a lot. We're not trying to price gouge people. But um, I encourage you to turn on your Google alerts so that you can find these types of articles because they could potentially be game changers. And you could decide, I've been doing retail arbitrage forever, but now I am selling tea all the time, 24 seven. And that's what I do because of the fact you found your lane. Most of the time when we're doing retail arbitrage, sometimes people haven't found their lane. And so if you find your lane, you find your niche, you find those five to 10 or 15, 20 products that are sell over and over and over again, then you want to make a note of that. OK, so that's what I do. I pay attention to the article. So, I, you know, I don't get a chance to watch football. But yes, I do pay attention to Google <laughs> Alerts. <laughs> Google Alerts. If I get a Google Alert about something, I'm going to be paying attention to it. All right. So I hope that's helpful to you all. I hope the information that we shared was helpful. Now we're going to go into some e-commerce tips. And we already gave you some tips. I mean, if you go back and listen to this, first of all, share this out with a friend. Let somebody else know about the podcast. Um, make a note of the changing time that's coming in October the 1st. 
and uh, invite them to come check it out and, and to come and listen in because we do try to give you something that you can actually use right now. So with that being said, we are moving into today's topic, which, well, the news was it, but uh, cutting and managing your shipping costs. If you're going into Q4, we're going to be cutting and managing shipping costs. And let me just tell you, Kelly's very passionate about this topic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I will let Kelly do most of the talking. So Kelly, let's start with number one. Okay. Do not pay retail. That, what I mean is you do not go to the post office or UPS or FedEx and pay the counter prices. Those are not you. If you are selling on a platform, eBay, Etsy, Amazon, you get commercial prices it, um, with using their shipping. And a lot of places around here, I mean, a lot of the places the platforms now have QR um, codes that you can download to get those commercial, you know, prices and you don't have to pay the retail. So you're like, well, I don't have a printer. You, you can put download those QR codes onto your, your phone and go up and they can scan it and they'll print up the label right there and, 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 you know, put it on your, thing and you paid for it'll pay for it through your um how you have it set up in your uh back office of whatever platform you sold on so i mean it could be a big savings i mean not like 50 cents here no 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 it's like sometimes it's three four dollars difference especially if we get into heavier stuff so yeah. don't pay retail don't pay retail always get used to checking your back office whatever platform you're selling on See what kind of deal, because they do negotiate those rates. All right, mm -hmm. next. Know your weights and measurements. So knowing um, how much something will weigh, including the box and whatever filler, if you need bubble wrap and everything. You're like, well, I don't want to wrap it. I used to learn. As you're going along, you learn. I, I can pretty much get judge about how much, okay, this thing weighs one pound, three ounces, and I'm going to need you some bubble wrap and it's going to need a box. So it'll be a little, it'll probably close It'll be over two pounds to ship after all that to ship it. So that means I need to charge three pounds because you need to always round up. If it's two pounds, one ounce, you have to round up. So knowing your weights and measurements, um, that can change to what company you're going to use because now um, the United States Postal Service, if anything's over 14 inches long, they're going to start charging you extra for the length. So it might be better to go to um, UPS or FedEx because of the length of something. So no, knowing these things can help you save money or help you get, you know, not lose customers because you didn't. And now the customer has to pay that extra because you didn't charge, you didn't, you know, say it, you say you, you thought it weighed two pounds and it weighed three pounds. And now uh, your customer is getting charged to get the item that they ordered from you because you didn't use the correct weights and now in the post office like well you need to pay that extra amount there you go um compare the rates on shipping sites so i'm talking like there's a site called pirate ship it's free yeah it's pirate pr yeah you know, like pirate you know like you know captain jack sparrow you know pirate ship um, they have negotiated different rates than um, eBay or Etsy and such. So you can go on there and you can look and see what you can actually import your sales from eBay and Etsy. And if they have lower rates and to save you money and say so you buy your label off of those sites, they automatically send the tracking information to eBay or Etsy and whatever other sites that can be integrated with um, Pirate Ship. There's also like ShipStation and 
others. I haven't tried them, but I love pirate ship. Um, it's free. You don't have to pay a, any kind of like subscription for it. They have great rates for cubic rates. And that's like shipping small, heavy stuff where, where um, you're shipping more on size rather than weight. And there's also, um, they have some great international rates on for shipping to, say, Canada or Australia. So that can save you money right there, too. Absolutely. Oh, my favorite. Recycling boxes, filler, and other shipping supplements or supplies. Um, so you can have your friends, fam. You can even, I know people that say, I just give, have my husband bring home all his boxes from his, what he gets at work. He has everyone at work save boxes. And he, they have, they save me all the peanuts or they save me all the, don't use peanuts to ship in Amazon. Yeah, <laughs> I've used peanuts for like shipping glass items to customers. Um, but um, the bubble air po air pockets, you know, the air pillows. Air pillows. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm like, what are those things called? Um, I have boxes of those out in the garage from from my my job. Um, I, my my patient gets shipping. She gets stuff shipped to her every month and. And the parents don't want the box. They don't want the fill. They don't want the air pills. They have no use for it. They're like, and I asked them, "Can I have it?" And they're like, "Yeah, go ahead. We're just gonna throw them away." So I just take them, and have them out there in the garage, and I just grab them when I need it. And I always have it, and you know, just having that makes it safe for your stuff to get there, so it doesn't get broken on yes. your way to uh, wherever it's being shipped to. <laughs> I just wanted to say uh, this was the first, well, probably not the first. It's probably the third lesson I learned from Nikki um, was, you know, I got that big 30 gallon trash, big uh, 30 gallon trash black bag. Um, I think I got the, uh, the flex force flex lab mm -hmm. and I would put the air pillows in there. All of the air pillows that ever came in anything. Just put them all in that. And so then you have these big, giant 30 gallon trash bags full of air pillows that are ready <laughs> to use at any given moment. Because, you know, I'm look, uh, Amazon is really bad with excess. And what I mean by that is back in the day, they've gotten better with the packaging here in the last yeah. year, I feel like. <laughs> but prior to that, well, you could get like a big old box and it had like, I don't know. 12 air pillows in it and in the middle of it is your one thing that you bought and it's like what the sam heel like you couldn't just shift this in a smaller box and use less air pillows so excess was a big issue with um amazon but i think in the last year they've gotten much better than they have been historically so i still have air pillows from like three years ago four years ago <laughs> available to me in trash bags uh in black uh gallon trash bags 30 gallon trash bags so i could use that and that's supposed to say instead of supplements supposed to say supplies so hey it was a typo on my part <laughs> all right go ahead <laughs> next one kelly um knowing when to use different shipping companies like i was saying earlier you know just the size of um an item if it's really long it then you're going to be charged extra with the post office. So you, but it could be better to use FedEx or UPS and same thing, heavier, big, heavier stuff. I see so many times I'm, I, well, I'm in waiting in line at the post office or, you know, and I'm dropping off something at the post office and there's someone bringing in a box of like big as a, those old school, big, screen TV, you know, not the big screen TVs, but, you know, the TVs that you, that, that, that used to sit there, like 26-inch TVs that were a big box. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's some young people in the audience who are like, what? There was TVs? Like, there were a box? Yeah. <laughs> um, but they, they have boxes that big. I'm going, you're going to try to ship that the post office? You're way over size because once you get over a certain size in the post office, they start charging you extra fees. 
so going to FedEx or uh, UPS where it's going to be cheaper because they're not charging you those extra fees just because of size. They're more, they're used to handling those larger items. So if you have larger items, you know, check around for price, compare prices, you know? Yeah. And the other thing, well, I think we're going to get to it. One of these is uh, (laughs) paying attention to what you ship. So one of these, all right, go ahead. Okay. This is what the, post office they have these flat rate boxes and envelopes i love the flat rate envelopes i've shipped i shipped my coffee mugs and i'm like you ship coffee mugs and envelope i put it in a box first and then put it in envelope because the envelope was one price no matter where it goes in the united states i can ship it from here in texas to the next county in texas and it'll be the same price if i shipped it from here to maine um, it's one, one flat price, um, same flat rate boxes. I don't use as much, um, but there's also like regional rate boxes they have and the regional rate a boxes, anything you can fit in there is a two pound weight. Yeah. And then they have a regional B. I think anything in there is like a four pound rate, I believe. I, but, um, I'd have to look it up i don't really use regional b too much but i use regional a quite often yeah. i've used regional a a lot too all right um know your estimated shipping costs for items you sell regularly um i you know for stuff that was on amazon that i was going to ship out uh myself and I pretty much knew it was between this and this amount of prices. You know, it weighs about four ounces and then about another two ounces for a bubble mail. So about six ounces. So three to four dollars to ship it. Um, you know, because you know, you have to estimate because I remember when, we fir- when I first started, oh, we first started selling. First class was one price across the rack. Ra- across the way there wasn't that no difference on zones and everything was one cost if i was shipping from here to the next county or if i was shipping from here to washington state it was one price but now they have all these zones and everything so now you have to try to figure out well if i ship it to the next county it's only 3.99 but if i'm shipping it to washington state it's down near 550 so um Knowing your estimated shipping costs, um, especially if you want to do free shipping, uh, if you want to do free shipping, you have to know your estimated shipping costs so that you're not um, underpricing your item and not giving yourself any profit on your items. Yeah. The other thing is, so I mentioned earlier, we were talking about the chocolates. Like if you're a person that you sell uh, candy all the time because we're going to be selling candy bags. <laughs> we're going to be shipping them out to our customers, potentially ourselves. Again, pay attention to the weather, pay attention <laughs> to a bunch of different things and figure out strategically how you can get it to your customer without it being 100% melted. Because I can tell you those UPS trucks, the USPS trucks, the FedEx trucks, like leaving stuff on the tarmac, your stuff is going to get melted. So you got to get strategic about this shipment to your customers. But if it's something that you ship regularly around this time, then you should have a good idea how much that shipping may potentially cost you. So start paying attention to the things like if you know you're going to be every year sending candy out for Easter, it's not Easter, sorry, well, for Easter, uh, for Halloween, for Christmas, for Thanksgiving, for Christmas. If you know that's something you're going to be sending, think about strategically, okay, I'm going to sell, I'm going to start listing these hard candies here. And then as I get closer to it not being as hot, I'm going to start listing the chocolates and be prepared to uh, ship your chocolates and know how much it's going to cost you. So you know what your margins are. You do a better job of estimating your margins. The stuff you sell regularly, you should have an idea, just a rough estimate, even if postal costs change from year to year. All right, go ahead. Um, Considering establishing a business. So, you know, you can get better prices as a business account, you know, doing your, if you have a private label. So 
you can. I, Nicole probably does this better than me because I, I don't do this is not my forte. I, <laughs> I do shipping, but I I I just I know how to ship with the uh with the with the platforms. There you go. So here's the deal. If you are a person that's doing private label or you're doing white label, um, even if you're doing some level of, you know, private label uh, drop shipping, then again, well, with private label drop shipping, somebody else is shipping it for you. But if you're receiving your products in and you're doing the shipping for yourself or you're sending it over to a fulfillment center, you should have an idea as you estimate your costs. Again, going back to estimating stuff that you ship regularly and establishing a business account may actually save you some money, especially if it's a product that sells like hotcakes during a certain time of the year. So maybe you have a product that's a steady eddy. It sells throughout the year pretty consistently, but you know that there is a spike in sales, I don't know, October and November. And so if there's a spike in sales, in other words, sales double or triple or quadruple, having a business account, you may actually end up getting better rates for um, shipping your product out through whoever you're using, whether it's FedEx, UPS, um, USPS, because you have a business account and they can see those trends and they may give you a better rate, um, you know, a better discount. So always check your platform. That's the first thing, whatever platform you're selling on, see what kind of deal you can get. Um, and then if you have some data on your private label product or your white label product, and it gives you enough trend data to where you can go and potentially get establish a business account and even talk to a specialist to say, hey, I want to negotiate this because we're about to have X number of sales. This is what we've done historically, and we'd like to get a better rate and just see what they, the worst they can do is say no. <laughs> That's the worst <laughs> thing they can do is say no. So do that research because it may actually yield you a higher ROI on whatever product you're selling. Okay, this is more taxes, but track your shipping related miles. If you're going to the post office, because maybe your post, your local post office is like mine and they are not good at doing porch pickup. Um, mine's not. I'm sorry I tried and one time they did, and the other times they haven't. So I'm not going to risk that on my on my business. So I either have me or my husband take my items that are needed to be shipped out to the post office, and I make sure I track those miles. So I try to combine trips. So I might go and drop something at the post office after I drop off my kid at their jobs. So then I'm getting all that miles right there. I drop my kids at their job and I go to the post office. I was doing it. Yeah, I dropped my kids at the at their job. But yeah, I was doing something for my business. So it's business related. That means check that goes on the uh, taxes for miles. So you can deduct them. And, save, and those tax deductions are a big help when you're doing your taxes at the end of the year. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. And um, that reminds me. I literally just saw an article that says that you may get an IRS refund if you filed your taxes late during the pandemic. There you go. So. <laughs> All right. Next is always keep your supplies on hand. Go ahead, Miss Kelly. Yes. Always, if you know, have stuff that you know you use all the time, you're using tape all the time, you're using certain boxes all the time, and you see it's getting low, especially at this time of year, you need to go ahead and order it because it might take start taking longer for that stuff to get to you. Uh, if you use those flat rate envelopes, you better get them now because the post office could start really, really slow getting those going out pretty soon. Um, you want to be in the middle of packing up all your sales because, and then realize you ran out of boxes. Now you have to run to Walmart and you're paying a dollar a box instead of 50 cents a box. And then, you know, that can add up if you have to buy 10 to 12 boxes, you know? So make sure you have enough supplies on hand. And if you see you're getting low, go ahead and, you know, Put that on a to-do list somewhere, highlight it, you know, to make sure that you're going to have the supplies you need. But you don't want to be making midnight runs to Walmart because you ran out of paper in your printer because you need to print labels. So, 
No, nobody <laughs> wants to do that. <laughs> Make sure you're ready. And especially when you know that there's going to be a peak or a spike mm-hmm. in your, like, you know, sales that are about to happen, especially prior to Black Friday, Cyber Monday, like, you know, you're going to be shipping round the clock that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, like you should be ready for that. It should be a surprise to you. <laughs> Would you agree, Kelly? Yeah. Don't want to yes. be in the middle of everything and hey, I'm out of tape. And you go to your tape drawer and hey, there's no more tape. Oh, uh, Lordy. That's got to take up time from away from being able to ship because you're having to go somewhere and right. get some supplies. Absolutely. All right. So we hope that all that information was helpful to you. Uh, we hope that you use that. Go back and replay it. Listen to it. Um, definitely, um, you know, take some notes. Put together your game plan. If you didn't get get an econ planner, like having an econ planner and having something you can flip to and know, okay, I need to be ordering this now, and I need to be doing this now, and I need so that you're not caught off guard. Like we've given you some strategic moves that you could be making in your business, depending on what your method of e-commerce is, what platforms you sell on, that you can actually implement like real time. So go back and listen to this again, but also put some of this stuff on your calendar. And so if you don't have an e-commerce planner, I'm telling you this e-com planner we're coming out for 2023 is the bomb. Like it is, I'm sorry, but it is. Um, the, the enhancements that we've made to it, the feedback we've gotten back, everyone who has the planner is like absolutely in love with it. And so this next one, we added some more features to it just to make it even better than it was last year. And I didn't know that that was possible, but it is. And so I encourage you to grab the planner before the price suggests. Uh, this is going to be for the 2023 Econ Planner. I am going to do a video whenever it's... Um, We've got like two more pages that we've got to update. And once those pages are done, uh, we are ready to showcase a sample. But in the meantime, you can get it now at a discounted price before 2023 hits. I love the cover. This is actually not the real cover. The new cover is completely different, but this is a pretty cool cover. But I want you to know that this planner can really change your business and help you take it to the next level. If you're looking to level up, and if you're looking to you know, make some major changes in your business, definitely check out the planner. I do want to encourage you, like those people that have started this e-commerce journey and quit and then started again and quit and then started again and went and did something else and then came back and quit. Like, you know, when the stuff was going on with cryptocurrency that's still going on, like people are like re-interested in e-commerce. Let me just tell you, there's a reason why Kelly is still doing e-commerce X number of years later, I think Kelly and I met in 2014. And so that just is a testament to show you that you can make friends with people over the internet. And uh, it's it's hashtag facts. And then, you know, um, and I've been sticking with e-commerce that long. And so there's there's something there. And there are lots of people that do make money, quiet money, doing this e-commerce thing. But the way that they do it is that they are very focused and very strategic about the things that they sell, the things that they source, their method of e-commerce. Because again, the action steps for each one of those is going to be different. Having an e-commerce planner to help you to get organized, get focused, stay consistent in your business, you will not regret that investment at all. So go get your e-com planner your 2023 econ planner and use that to help you uh, get in the best position possible to win in 2023. And then the next thing is the Q4 bootcamp for those people that are active econ sellers, Academy members, and also econ sellers, customers, check out your emails. We're starting this week. It's this Thursday. So check your emails for the registration link. Cannot wait. We're going to be kicking it off and we're going to continue to talk about Q4 all the way into December. So it's every Thursday. I think it's at seven or eight. Uh, Don't hold me to that at this point. I got to go look at the calendar because everything is a blur. Look, I have just spent like two weeks, three weeks, redoing a bunch of standard operating procedures called SOPs, rewriting them, re-recording them, working through some stuff with my kids, going to go see therapists, blah, blah, blah. So I don't have all the dates in the top of my brain at this very moment, but just know that it is on Thursdays and it is in the evening and there will be a replay and 
I am so um, looking forward to it. So we're going to upload these videos. If you are an Academy member, we will upload the videos into Academy. If you are a Mastery member, we will upload the videos into Mastery. If you are a Summit buyer, a Ecom Seller Summit or Q4 Summit, we will upload it into the Q4 Summit and we'll also upload it into Ecom Seller Summit. So wherever your membership lives right now, we will upload these videos up to those um, membership sites. So all you have to do is just log into your membership site and you'll be able to see this, okay? Then next, just encourage you, if you want the recordings for the Ecom Q4 Summit, if you want all the bonuses, all the lists, Go grab the Ecom Q4 Summit right now. You gain access to the recordings. Plus, you'll be able to participate in the Q4 uh, sessions that we're going to be having. And you'll also get all these amazing lists. And you get 50 leads every single week. It started yesterday or started on the 9th. And you get them every Friday. 50 leads every Friday until the end of November. So all of September, October, November, December, 200 leads in September, 200 leads in October, 200 leads in November. That's what you get for grabbing the Ecom Q4 Summit All Access Pass. So if you want to get ready for Q4, there's going to be Q4 training that we're uploading on a weekly basis in there. You're also going to get a weekly leads list. So I don't know why you wouldn't do it. Go grab the Ecom Q4 Summit uh, recording right now so you can take advantage of that. And get your Q4 leads. So even if you don't want to buy the summit recordings, because if you don't want to get the summit recordings and you can just buy the leads by themselves, again, you can go and get those at ecomsellersacademy.com forward slash R-A-O-A leads. If you want to get them included with everything else, then you can go purchase the Ecom Q4 Summit All Access Pass and you'll gain access to it immediately. So that's, I mean, it's your call how you want to do it your call. But in any case, if you just want the leads by themselves, you can pay that. It's $50 a month. And so you, by the time you finish paying, it'd be $150, which is fine. But you can get Q4 leads. We give you 50 leads every single week, 200 leads a month. And you can use that to help you in your business. So you go to ecomsellersacademy.com forward slash R-A-O-A leads. And I'm just going to take just a second. So I went and found um our may leads list this is a short may leads list we have some products here and in the short may leads list what we normally do is we normally have here's the other piece i just need to say this these are manually sourced this is not we're not using jungle scout we're not using helium 10 we're not using tactical arbitrage we're not using oax ray like there's a bunch of amazing tools that are out there that you can use to source your products. But everyone else is using those same tools. So these are all individually manually sourced to find them. Then they're re-reviewed and re-vetted. And then the list is emailed out to you. Okay. So they go through three layers of checking before you even get them. Three layers. The price, of course, of products are going to change, especially if you're selling on Amazon. It's just part of the buy box rotation. It is what it is. But... The thing is, is that in the middle of this, you could potentially find some products that you could use and sell over and over again, especially those recession proof, replenishable products that people are always looking to buy. And you don't always just have to sell them on Amazon. You can sell them on other platforms. So this is one of the leads list. Again, this is from May. Uh, so I didn't pull up a current one. But the thing that I do want to point out is that this old May list is still valid today. It's September and it is valid today. So what does that mean? Again, you can find those replenishable products that you can sell over and over again just by getting this leads list and saving it. So one of the first ones is you're sourcing this Dove Beauty Sensitive Bar 16 count for $17.98 at Sam's Club. And it is selling on Amazon for $27.06. Okay, and that's just using, you know, a zip code that's near me. So that is the price right now for the zip code that is near me. Still selling, selling for a higher price. Again, after you mark down fees and everything else, I think that bar, like the profitability, it changes. But the point is, is that it's a product that's a valid product that people can get right now and uh, be able to sell over and over again. 
So this one is Dove Antiperspirant Deodorant Cooled Essentials. Again, all these are Dove, so I'm just going to point that out. And these are all Dove for this particular leads list. They're all Dove, and I just pulled those out. So this is a four-pack for $16.98. It is selling on Walmart for $28.99 for this four-pack. Okay? So again, there is a profit there. And then the next one is Cascade uh, Platinum um, Action Packs. Now, I actually did buy some Cascade at Ollie's when we did the Ollie's uh, Shop and Learn. And uh, they had uh, the price that that thing is selling for right now is just insane. But anyway, so Ollie's has some Cascade going on as well. But in any case, 92 count is $21.98 uh, for a 92 count. And it is selling right now on Walmart for $33.60. Now, I didn't update any of the prices. I just wanted to show that these products are still potentially a viable uh, option. So I didn't go and update any of the product prices to see what the percentages were. I didn't do any of that. So I could see. But the point is, is that there is still some profit in old list and new list that are not sourced from software. So I just want to encourage you, if you haven't gotten your leads list or if you don't have a game plan for Q4, if you don't know what you're going to sell, if you want to you know, sell some products where you at least get a somewhat semi-decent ROI. Now, what are the margins going to be and your final profit going to be after that? Um, I can't tell you because I got to go back and change the numbers, but you know, there's going to be some level of profit. The question is, what is the rank of those particular products? And I would check the rank and I would always use Amazon, even though we looked at Walmart, I would see what they're, what the frequency of those products are selling for on Amazon. I would maybe drop those numbers into Jungle Scout. I still use the Jungle Scout extension just to find out how often this particular product is selling every single month. And it's just a guesstimate, but it is still something that I can use so that I can have the, what I refer to as those steady eddies, those products to sell every single year i'm sorry every single week or every single month no matter what people are not going to stop buying dove in a recession people are not going to stop buying soap they're not going to stop buying shampoo they're not going to stop buying antiperspirant they're not going to stop buying toothpaste they're not going to stop buying you know dental floss they're not going to stop buying these things in a recession so get strategic, get smart, use the leads, keep the leads list, make a copy and use that to help you in your business long term. Identify the products that you potentially want to keep selling every single month, no matter what, and use that to help you build your baseline income because there's replenishables on these lists. So I can guarantee you that every single one of our leads list has no less than, no less than 10 replenishables. Okay. It's probably more like, 70% replenishables and 30% non-replenishables, but we have no less than 10 at a minimum. So you can sign up for the leads list by going to ecomsellersacademy.com, R-A-O-A -A, leads to get your weekly leads, or you can just go buy the Ecom Seller Summit All Access Pass, Ecom Q4 Summit, Ecom Q4 Summit All Access Pass. And if you buy that, you'll automatically get the leads for September, October, November, and then you can, you know, if you want to continue it afterwards, you just come over to Ecom Sellers Academy and continue from there. So I hope this is helpful. I hope that you consider using it. Um, use the leads list to make some decisions. And the last thing is don't allow the fact that, hey, I'm not ungated to sell Dove. Stop you. You can establish an account on Walmart. You can sell Dove on eBay. You can sell Dove on other platforms. You can even create a Bonanza account. You can create a Google Shopping account. So Amazon is the only platform that will restrict you. And the way that you can get ungated in Dove is you can go through a wholesale supplier so that you can purchase at least 10 of those products to be able to be approved in Dove or just be consistent on your Amazon account. And over time, Amazon will automatically approve you to be able to sell Dove. So... Just putting it out there. All right. I hope that helps. So um, grab the leads. Go to ecomsellersacademy.com um, forward slash R-A-O-A -A leads list. Or just grab them directly from uh, the Ecom Q4 Summit All Access Pass. So with that being said, Kelly, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I am eternally grateful to you. So this has been another episode of the Ecom sellers podcast my name is nicole whitlock i'm kelly decom mom ward 
And Kelly and I come to you every Monday. The time is changing in October, uh, but we come to you every Monday to share with you e-commerce news tips and more. Share this out with a friend. Come back and listen to the replay. And we're going to say goodbye for now. Bye, Bye y'all.